yeah. And then he'll go, right, I've got great news. I've got your payment for you and it's $500 a month. And there's just silence, nothing else, silence. Like, do I say something? Like, am I supposed to say something? He's silent, he's not saying anything, he's just smiling. He's waiting for a response and you go, Good afternoon, MC Procrastinator here. I hope you guys are all doing well. This vlog that I've put together will help those of you who are looking to go out and purchase a motorcycle or any other vehicle for that matter of fact um, on finance. And we're specifically gonna call it HP. So we're gonna talk about HP, which is higher purchase. Typically that's what's offered by dealership, motorcycle dealerships, car dealerships, etc. So I have 15 odd years in the motor industry. I'm outside that industry now. Um, but there's some really fundamental things you need to understand, some great tips that will help you get the best deal on finance. Some people think that when you're sitting down with a finance person, that that number that you get given with regards to payment and all the other bits and pieces that go with it or don't go with it, and that information that's provided to you is that's it, fine print, set in stone, okay? There's lots of variables, there's what you do for a living that can impact the rates, etc. that you get on finance, your credit history, all these sorts of things. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the different things that you can use as tools to reduce the payment that you're gonna have to pay and get the best deal possible. And those tools apply to regardless of the situation, all right? It's just how much benefit you get may differ, right? So let's talk about a scenario. Let's just say we've gone in and we're looking to buy a $10,000 motorcycle. We've agreed a price, we're happy. We're gonna go now into the finance person. The finance person. Okay, so the finance person will do a couple of things. First, he'll congratulate you on buying your motorbike, even though you've not quite bought it just yet. He'll congratulate you. And then he'll um, do a little bit of small talk, ask a little bit about yourself, you know, what, what do you do for a living, blah, blah, blah. Then he'll go into the fine print form mode, okay? And that will be, right, I need your details. I need your name, address, your driver's license number, how long you've lived at that address for, etc., etc. <clears throat> He'll ask you income information. He'll ask you if information around your house. He'll collect heaps and heaps of information, okay? Now it's really, really important that you make sure that the information you give is correct. And that if you have applied for finance anywhere else, that those records match up. Because, I mean look, if you've said that you live work at your job for two and a half years, and you said at one place two, two years and eight months, that's not a problem. But if you said you work at your job for five years and you say at this place two and a half years and you know there's a considerable amount of um, differentiation between the information you're provided at one place versus the other, that will raise flags with the finance company and that will cause you problems, okay? Unless it can be explained easily away like a simple mistake. So. With a finance person, he's captured all this information off you, and then he'll run down. Right, have you got the information from the salesperson? Yep, it's $10,000 motorcycle, great, on the road cost, they go in there. Then there's the setup fee, but you don't get to see this, he's just writing this all out for you, okay? And then there's the payment protection. What's payment protection? That's okay, we'll cover that, because remember, he's writing this down. And then he gets on his little computer or he gets his calculator, like tap, 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 tap. Mm, might make a couple of hum noises, mm, that, mm, yeah. And then he'll go, right, I've got great news. I've got your payment for you and it's $500 a month. And there's just silence, nothing else, silence. Like, do I say something? Like, am I supposed to say something? He's silent, he's not saying anything, he's just smiling. He's waiting for a response and you go, ah, oh, well, you know, you're working it in your head. Like, is that what I expected? 
is that what I'm going to, wow, like it's not, wait a minute, and you just kind of go, oh yeah, okay, you know, like so you go, oh yeah, okay, and he goes, great, so you're happy with that then, and you're like, wow, not really, like, you know, I did some research before I came in today, and well, you know, for $10,000 on all the loan companies have been online to sort of use their calculators, came back with like, I don't know, $350. Ah, oh, yeah, but that's, see what it is, like online, right? So he'll come in then, online, yeah, but you know, the difference is that they don't factor in a lot of different things like your salary, how much deposit you're putting in, and you know, some of that's true, right? Some of that's true, but you know what? We know where it's going. They've put in all sorts of things that we don't want. Now, usually this is well regulated. Every country's slightly different. So they would have to talk to you about that. And that's where the next step, he'll come in. He'll go, right, let me break it down for you, all right? He'll go, right, so it's $10,000 for your bike. It's $500 for your on-road costs. It's $250 for your prep. Oh, prep, wow, I pay for prep, I didn't know. I thought the dealer might pay for that. But, you know, we're talking hypothetically here. You'd be surprised what you could um, add in there. And, um, you know, so $250 for your prep. And then I put payment protection in there because you told me you've been in your job for like six months. And, um, you know, having payment protection will give you the security that if you lose your job, you know, you're going to be protected. Like, think, you know, honestly, you've only been in your job six months, so you're in a high-risk area. It's a lot of money to spend, so this will give you that peace of mind. It will give you that peace of mind. It will make you feel safe that if something happens, you will be able to pay for your bike. And then you're going, oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Stop right there. Stop right there. Do you know what? One, if you read the small print from Payment Protection, there's so much ambiguity around all sorts of different things. I'm not saying don't go with it. I'm just saying don't be bought into it. It's one of the most expensive things that you can get, right? You know, you know the likelihood of you being sacked or fired or made redundant in your job. And whilst there's things that can come out the blue, right? There are things that can come out the blue, right? Look at the risk. If there's like a three or 4% chance of you losing your job, don't worry about it. If you think there's 50% chance or 40% chance of you losing your job, in other words, if you think there's any high risk of you losing your job for whatever reason, then take the payment protection. Just make sure you read the fine print. And also watch my vlog that I'm gonna do separate to this about the repercussions, the repercussions that you can have when you come to change your bike or sell your bike later on and you've taken out products, financial products, whatever they might be, when you purchase the motorcycle. So check out that vlog, all right? So, great. Let's say we've decided, look, I'm happy with my job. I have no qualms about being sacked or being made redundant. I don't want payment protection. You might go, look, you know, but no. I don't want payment protection. So he looks a bit unhappy, because guess what? Payment protection usually costs around about three to $4,000 to cover you for the period of the uh, motorcycle, and he gets a big whack off that. That's probably like $800 commission, right? It's a huge, there's a huge um, component of commission that comes off that, right? <clears throat> So we've taken that out, and let's just go with that for the time being. I mean, the PDI, yeah, we'll pay for the PDI. You know, I might have a nasty little comment to the salesman for not telling you, but we'll pay for the PDI. Of course, we'll pay for the on-road costs. You know, we've probably discussed all these things beforehand, okay? So we've got our 10 grand bike now, we've got our $250 for our PDI, and we've got our $500 on-the-road cost, 10750 And now our payments, let's say, are $400 a month. You're like, whoa, $400 a month, well, it's better, but um, wait a minute, I still seen all these other ones that were on the internet 
at like $300. And you know what, the finance person is probably thinking this stage, like mate, I tell you what, I wish this guy would just bugger off and just go and borrow the loan. I'm doing all this work. You know, he's not even having anything for me. I'm not gonna make any money. And this is just, you know, I, I just wanna get on to the next one. And that's honestly how it could be with finance. Because for everything you take off and for every rate that you drop down, it's less money to him and it becomes a waste of time. You might as well be the cash person. But not to you, it's important to you. Because who cares about this guy? You want the right deal, right? You give them the business, you want the right deal. You're not gonna be screwed over at the last point, okay? You've negotiated hard on the bike, you've got a good deal, you're happy with the salesman, you're not gonna get screwed over at the finance point, right? <clears throat> so, then he'll go, right, okay, yep, so I've put it in to look, you can see there, um, there's the rate, it's, you know, it's 18%, uh, let's say, and then you go, right, it's 18%. Why is it 18%? The ones online are like 8% or 10%, right? Now, it is quite important, and you need to bear this in mind. We're gonna differentiate very quickly to give you a quick rundown of different types of loans you can get in interest rates, okay? So, <clears throat> let's look at your standard personal loan. A standard personal loan, um, with the bank or with any large organization, you know, it's quite competitive, right? And what I mean by competitive, I'm just gonna throw rates out there as averages, okay? Um, personal loans, you might get anywhere from sort of 8% up to say 14, 15% and beyond, okay? And then HP, oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. And then the other types of loans is your house loans, home loans. So I'm gonna remortgage my house, right? Well, if you're gonna remortgage your house, you're probably talking like four or 5%, whatever the average is for the mortgage rates at that time. That's a really economical way to pull money out, but it's uneconomical in the long term. Because, yeah, I'm not gonna go into that, but it's uneconomical in the long term, okay? So then there's um, a secured loan. So a secured loan is kind of like a step up from the other type of loan, you get a better rate because they have security against your house. So that probably brings you into the lower ends of the eights and the 10%, right? And then, and then there's HP. So there's two different, actually there's a few different versions of HP, but I don't want to overcomplicate it for now, right? There's dealer subsidized HP, um, and there's your standard HP. Dealer subsidized HP tends to be likes of Honda Finance, um, Yamaha Finance, or the subsidiaries that promote finance and offer that within motorcycle dealerships, they'll, they'll put money into the finance rate to be able to reduce it, so it's subsidized. So it means that you get a better rate. These can be really, really great deals, to be absolutely honest with you, okay? Definitely worth taking, okay? Um, but let's just talk about standard scenario. We've gone in, there's no subsidized deals, and perhaps this vehicle doesn't qualify for it. All right, because this tends to be, this probably this is probably, for the most part, your typical purchase. And this covers people that buy new or used, okay? And again, all these tools apply. So, um, yep, so you've, the HP itself will probably be anywhere between, say, maybe a low 12%, right up to possibly as much as 24%. Okay, and that 24% could be higher risk, higher risk categories, right? But for now, let's say they've calculated, right, you've got 18%, you go, well, I've got a good job, right? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, I'm not happy with that rate. And he say, oh, look, let me see what I can do for you. So he may like play about with the figures a wee bit, reduce, you know, the setup charge, because um, there's always usually a setup charge, maybe even throws a setup charge away. Um, so that's basically an establishment fee for putting together the finance and he reduces the rates. So let's say we got down to, oh, what did we get down to? We got down to 400, all right? Let's just say he takes another $25 off a month, all right? But we're still, we're still a bit of a ways away from where we were earlier on, right? So we've gone in there, we've told them we don't want all the payment protection stuff, we've taken that out. Um, we've grinded him a little bit on rate, he's brought that down and he's taken out some charges, okay? But truthfully, he's probably only reduced that by maybe one and a half, two percent 2%. We want to hit that more. So this is really where you need to turn around and go, hey, look, um, you know, uh, thanks for all your help, but look, I need to go away and I need to go and think about this now because it's more expensive. In fact, you know what? Maybe I'll go and borrow the money from elsewhere. 
And then the panic sets in. The panic sets in, why? Because the salesman, for one, has sold a bike. Or so he thought. The finance has now got himself into a bit of gobbledygook because he's now potentially gonna throw away a customer because he's not been very transparent with the way he's put the finance package together for you. So usually at this point, there's a bit of ass flapping, a bit of, you know, flapping with his words. Uh, just wait there, I will go and get the manager and see what we can do for you that's, you know, uh, more like what you're liking. I can't promise anything, blah, blah, blah. And now you've got a bit of a smirk on your face because you know what? You know you've got them. You've, you know you have this person where you want them. He'll come back and he says, look, I told him, what will it take for us to get this sorted out now? That's what he'll, what will it take? And you'll go, ha ha, you have to be careful here. Don't get carried away. Don't go less than what they're doing on the internet because that's not going to happen, right? Don't go less. Just be honest. You know, you've been looking at the internet and you thought a good deal was 320. Do the 320. Just make sure that your, you know, research has been, you know, thorough because you might shoot yourself in a foot here. Just say, well, look, they're on the internet for $350. You know, can you, can you do it for $350? And then he'll remind you, you know, just remember it's not $10,000 you're borrowing, it's the 500 plus the 250 for the PDI and stuff. Oh yeah, okay, that's fair enough. So that's an, that's an extra $20 a month, he might exaggerate that. But, you know, in your mind, you know, you can work with that, right? So then what you find is he does a deal with you and you've got the lowest rate possible, right? So what have you done? You understood how it works. You understand how to be able to push back. You understand how you're able to push back when you think you can't push back because you're in a lower position of power because you don't necessarily understand how it works and they may have implied that you have a certain weakness of power, whether it be because of your age, because of the deposit you're putting in, etc. And you know what, right? If you've done all that and it goes through the finance and perhaps you've not been as strong on paper as you might have thought, do you know what will happen? The finance company will come back and let's say you've got only a $500 deposit where ideally you want $2,000 deposit. You know, in a lot of instances, that will just go through. But if, you know, you're younger and you don't really have that credit history, all they'll do is they'll say, that's fine, can you put $2,000 in as a deposit? Okay? Hopefully you're in a position to be able to do that. If not, you may then have the opportunity to use a guarantor where a, a member of your family can step in and sign for you, double sign. So they have an, owner, they have an obligation to the finance as well that will keep the rate. So there's lots of different things to do. So guys, it's really important that you always remain positive, as positive as you can be. Be honest about your circumstance, be honest about your history, be honest about the types of loans that you've got, right? And always push back. Don't feel you have to have something because you're more likely to have the finance accepted. That is not the case. It's not the case, okay? So, look, I'm gonna wind this one up. Remember and check out my vlog on the impacts and implications of taking out finance additional after-sale products, okay? It's really, really important that you understand what the long-term effects are when you have these added to your bike, okay? So, guys, for now, if you like the content, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to me. Um, I much appreciate your support. MC Procrastinator out.